The Pirate's Angelfish is a beautiful orange and blue reef fish that makes an interesting, if not challenging, addition to your home reef. Hi guys and girls, I'm Reef Man, and today we're going to talk about Centropige Potteri, the Russet or Potter's Angelfish. The Potter's Angelfish was first described in 1912 by Jordan and Metz from specimens that they correct, collected in the Hawaiian Islands. It's actually found throughout Hawaii and also all the way down to the Marshall Islands in shallow water up to about 100 feet deep. They're found amongst rocks and coral rubble on the edges of reefs. These fish are mostly found in the shallow rocky areas and rocky reefs close to shore. They're found also in coral reefs and on the outside edges of the coral reef where they're exposed to ocean currents. According to the IUCN Red List, the populations of the potter's angelfish in the wild are stable despite collection for the pet trade. The minimum time for wild populations to double is only about 15 months, making it a very resilient species in the wild against collection or habitat loss. The potter's angelfish grows to about four or five inches and makes a nice addition to large reef tanks, tanks with enough rock for it to nibble and get nutrition. Like all pygmy angelfish, the potter's angelfish can and will nip at Acropora and also at large polyp stony corals, though I've never experienced this with mine. Also, like all angelfish, they're very likely to nibble at clams, and so you should consider them if you already have clams in your tank or you plan on adding any. Potter's angelfish eat constantly by grazing on the rockwork and they get a lot of their nutrition that way. That's why I don't recommend them for smaller tanks. A lightly stocked 55 gallon with lots of rock would be the absolute minimum that I'd recommend, but an even larger tank would be best. You should supplement their grazing with pellets and frozen food. Both of my potter's angelfish eat my homemade frozen food, I'll link the recipe above, as well as New Life Spectrum pellets, PE Mysis pellets, and the Nios wild goji pellets. They definitely prefer smaller food sizes, so make sure you get small pellets and feed a frozen food that melts into small enough particles for your fish to eat. Chopped mices should also work, and when I offer it to my fish, they eat it. The potter's angelfish, like most other pygmy angelfish, does not tolerate other pygmy angelfish in its territory. The exception to this rule is its mate. Potter's angelfish form lifelong monogamous pairs. Unlike some pygmy angelfish, the potter's angel does not form harems, so I wouldn't suggest trying to keep a group of them together in your tank like you can with some other angelfish like the flame angel. Forming a pair of potter's angelfish in your aquarium is not overly difficult, but it does require some patience and planning. With time, you should be successful, although of course nothing is guaranteed. You should start off with young fish, and one should be noticeably larger than the other. I bought two from LiveAquaria.com, one small size and one medium size, and then separated my 10 gallon quarantine tank with a screen divider so that they could see each other through it but couldn't fight. I did my normal quarantine procedure, the tank transfer method, and I kept the screen in place for a couple weeks. Then I was able to remove the screen and the fish more or less got along. By the end of quarantine, they tolerated each other, and now, a couple of years later, they spend most of the time together in my tank. Around dusk, you might notice your fish swimming together, and that one fish is nibbling or bumping against the other's underside. This is courtship or spawning behavior, and captive breeding is actually possible. In fact, it was first reported in 2016 from a group in Hawaii, and there are a few threads on Reef to Reef from hobbyists about similar successes as well. Potter's angelfish are not currently commercially reared, but requirements should be similar to other pygmy angelfish that are commercially reared, like the coral beauty angel, so hopefully we'll start getting more captive bred specimens soon. As I mentioned, in your tank you sometimes will observe spawning behavior just before your lights go off, although it would be quite the accomplishment to actually be able to capture the eggs and then rear the larva to adulthood. The potter's angelfish really isn't too difficult to care for, provided you get fish in good condition to start with. Feed them often, provide them with lots of rock to pick at, maintain impeccable water quality, and they should reward you as an interesting fish to enjoy for years in your aquarium. That's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed the video, and don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you liked it. Thanks, see you next time, bye.